you guys see that little baby back there? Oh, bothered her. Okay. She knows, I swear she knows when I'm talking to her. Like, if I'm just talking to you guys, she'll fall asleep back there. But I feel like she knows when I'm talking to her. She'll always open her eyes. Anyways, hey guys, what is up? And welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, I am Catherine, the creator of the Content Bug. And I'm here to help you follow your passion by growing your audience online. I have not done that intro in a hot minute. I feel like I haven't started with that in a while. So, hey guys, what is up? Today we are going to be talking about blogging. And I specifically want to talk about how you can make your blog posts look more interesting. And just be more interesting in general so that people stay on your blog, they actually read it, and maybe they go to other blog posts, maybe they turn into long-term followers, you know, whatever you want your blog readers to do, how you can just make your blog posts more successful. So how can you tell if your blog posts are like successful right now, if people are actually enjoying them? Where you wanna go is Google Analytics, and this shouldn't be a surprise to you, but there are a few things that you wanna look at. The first one is your bounce rate. If you've never heard of bounce rate before, it basically means someone either goes from Pinterest or Google, they click on your website, and they immediately bounce back to the platform that they were on previously. So they don't view any other pages. They're not really engaging with your content. They only go through one page back to wherever they started or they close out of the tab in general. So that is your bounce rate. And you wanna check that out. If your bounce rate's pretty high, you want to improve that by having people stay on your website by going to other pages. So kind of leading them throughout your website. The next thing you wanna look at is your visitors. Are they new visitors or returning visitors? Google Analytics can actually track that because let me tell you, the internet is a bit creepy. So if you have been to someone's website before and you go back to it again, you will then appear up as a returning visitor compared to the first time you visit someone's website, you will be a new visitor. So when you look at those statistics, if your returning visitor rate is pretty low, you want to improve that because that's really where your long-term followers are going to live. You wanna turn those first timers into returners, if that makes sense. And the last statistic that you really wanna look at is how long people are spending on the pages of your website. So if you have a really successful blog post that's went like viral on Pinterest, let's say, and you are getting eh, like 500 people to that page a day. That's a lot of people and that's great. But when you look at how long they spend on the page, is it only like 35 seconds or is it seven minutes? You really want to pay attention to how long they're spending on the page because if they're only spending a couple of seconds or even less than a minute, you are not engaging them with your content, with your blog post. And we are going to change that in today's video. So let's go ahead and get to the tips. Let's start with the basics on how to make a blog post interesting. From the very beginning, it all starts with your title. And your title has to be clickworthy. You have to get people to click on it, but it also has to be accurate. So you don't want to do clickbait titles that you don't actually include points to back up whatever your title is. So let's say I talk about like a go-to guide to starting a blog and then all I talk about is, let's say Bluehost, or I talk about GoDaddy, or I talk about WordPress, but I don't actually give the step-by-step guide on how to start a blog. People are gonna be like, what the heck is this? This is not what I signed up for. And they're going to leave and they're going to bounce back. So you need to make sure that your title is click-worthy, but accurate. So how do you create a click-worthy title? Well, it takes a little bit of time to master, I've gotta admit, but you wanna think what would be the title that you would click on. So if you wanna start a blog, let's say I have a title that says how to start a blog in seven minutes compared to start a blog today. What one would you actually click on? It would probably be how to start a blog in seven minutes because you think it's gonna be more informative. So how to's are great, list posts are great, guides are great, or let's say you're a fashion blogger and you wanna feature trends, you can focus in on keywords or things that people are actually searching. You know, this is where keyword research comes into play. This is where you really need to dive into the shoes of your audience and figure out what they are searching for, what they are going to click on. So it all starts with your title. Your title has to be interesting in and of itself. And then it goes to the layout. I know that there's a wide variety of opinions when it comes to the length of a blog post, how long it should be. And depending on your niche, it's going to be a bit longer than others, especially with how many images you include. So let's say if you're like a fashion or a food blogger, you want a ton of images in your blog post. Even if you're a family blogger, you want a lot of images in your blog post. Where for me, it doesn't really make as much sense because I'm talking about Pinterest. I'm talking about social media. A ton of images in there wouldn't really make sense unless I'm talking about Instagram and then there's Instagram images as examples. Then that makes sense. But when it comes to actually writing your content, how many words you have, that's going to vary based off your niche. But you wanna write more long form blog posts. So let's say you are that fashion blogger or food blogger and you don't actually have that much to say but you have a ton of images you want to include in that post. Your blog post may be just 
just as long as someone who writes 2,000 words. So what I recommend typically is over 1,500 words. And now some of my blog posts go upwards of 3,000 words. And I know that that is a lot, but the longer, the better. If it is too short and someone quickly glances at it and they're like, this isn't informative, they're gonna bounce back and hop off your website. And also talking about your layout, it needs to flow, needs to make sense, and it needs to be broken up. So heading tags are so, so important here. So if you want to talk about seven fashion trends this spring, you want to break it up and include those heading tags, breaking it by one, two, three, four, the whole way down to seven, and have them in bold so that if someone wants to skim your blog post, they can easily skim it and get the information that they want. So from there, I want to talk about more advanced stuff with you. Stuff that I incorporate within each of my blog posts to make them more interesting, to make them more engaging with the audience. So the first one, sex appeal. If your blog post looks ugly, no one's going to want to read it. If you write in paragraphs, you know, in high school and college, you're taught to write in this formal way where you have five sentence paragraphs or six sentence paragraphs and that just does not fly in the blogging world. If you have paragraph after paragraph after paragraph, people aren't going to want to read it. So one of the best ways that you can improve your writing on your blog post is to actually break it up and you want most of it to be one line and that's it. One line, space, next paragraph. One line, space, next paragraph. So only include a sentence or two in a paragraph and I know that sounds crazy, especially especially if you're a beginner blogger, but let me tell you, it works. And you also want to make sure that you are breaking up your content. So like I already talked about with heading tags, you want to break them up with heading tags. So if people want the main points of the post, they can easily see the main points of the post. But you also want to break it up with visuals because <laughs> let's be honest, no one wants to read an essay. Blog posts are meant to be a bit more of a visual process while also reading, you know? So if you can break it up with ads, don't go overboard on your ads, but ads are fine. Opt-ins for your email or images, or maybe you've got like a video or something that you want to break it up with, include those visuals. People love, love visuals, and it's a great way to break up your content and make it more interesting. Now, when you're writing your blog post, you can make it as long or in-depth as you would like. You can really just dive in on a certain topic or you could branch out and cover like the whole picture, you know? But one of the things that I would recommend you do is write a blog post and then link to relevant content. So let's say I'm writing a blog post about Pinterest and in there I'm talking about how you need a Pinterest business account. I would then include a link that says related, how to sign up for rich pins or how to create your Pinterest business account leading to a blog post or a YouTube video that I already have. That way I then don't have to go into so much detail within that one blog post and I can get on with what I wanted to talk about but I am also proving to them that I am an expert in my field that I've got other resources that they can enjoy and I'm giving them the information that they need so that they don't have to jump to another website they can actually just go straight to my website to my other resources to get the information that they are looking for this is something that I didn't do for a while but I am so glad that I started doing it because I think it makes a big difference in the look and feel of my blog post I can hear you moving back there and that is using bold italics or underlines where it is necessary. So I like to think of it in a way, if someone was just skimming my blog post, what would be the main words that they would want to read? So I pop out specific things within my sentences by bolding them. Things that I think people want to read are things that might capture their attention. I will bold that one part of the sentence because then it will get them to read the whole sentence because they want to know how that applies. So bolding some of your text is really important as well as using a Alex are using underlines where you think it kind of works. Write like you were talking to a friend, not like you're writing an essay or trying to be a professional or trying to be a professor in a certain topic. You want to write like you are just talking out loud to a friend. And let me tell you, this will make a huge difference in your content and a huge difference in the relationship that you build with your audience. So you know how when you're talking, you tend to not use, well, it depends on the person that you are. Me personally, I do not use as many like fancy, long, educated words, you know? I don't, I don't know. I feel like that sounds ridiculous. But when you are talking to a friend, you tend not to over elaborate or use longer words. You tend to use shorter words. So the way that I've actually described this before is that you want to write like a fourth grader and there's this app called the Hemingway app and I freaking love it but it will call you out when you're using too complicated of words or if you have any passive voice within your content if your sentences are too long it's gonna tell you when to break them up and it helps you to break it down to a level talking like a fourth grader and I know that that sounds ridiculous but you want it to be 
natural and you want it to flow and it just you want it to seem like you're just sitting in a room talking to your best friend and just giving them the information that you want to give them without seeming like you're talking down to them or like you're super professional and it all again depends on your niche but I'm telling you for most bloggers talking in first person talking like you're just talking to a friend it's going to make a world of a difference and building that connection and again it's going to take time to master for me my first few blog posts were a joke and they Looking back, you know what, I'm just so thankful that I got started, but there were really some key pieces that I was missing within my blog post. So, your skills will grow over time, but that is all I got for you in this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel, and I will see you guys back here in another one. Bye, guys!